Hey, Jeremy. So uh, thank you so much for um, talking to me today about uh, your amazing new documentary, A Disturbance in the Force, which is, of course, about the um, Star Wars holiday special. So um, and, and right off the bat, I want to say I loved your Raiders documentary. That was so cool. Oh, uh, thanks. Yeah. Uh, so um, tell me a little bit more about how this project uh, came to be. Uh, yeah, I mean, so I knew about the special kind of happenstance, like the first time I saw it was 2002. And uh, I made it like 20 minutes, a friend gave me a bootleg copy, and I, I just couldn't get into it. But over that time, it's kind of just amassed this, it's, it's a fun thing of like pop of pop culture, especially among Star Wars fans. So I met my co director, Steve Kozak, his dad was Bob Hope's, uh, like manager and producer. Mm. So he, he was very familiar with a lot of these variety people. And there's the same people that worked on the Bob Hope specials also worked on uh, the Star Wars holiday special. So as we started talking, uh, you know, I, I, he, he hadn't done a documentary before. So as we were talking about, it, I was just like, let's just jump in and start making this. So that was that was four years ago. And it's been a, a labor of love. But we're finally happy to share it with people. Nice. That's awesome. Um, uh, so who were you most surprised uh, participated in this uh, documentary? Most surprised? Everyone, almost everyone reached out to has been like totally supported. Like Seth Green was like number one, was like towards the top of my list of people I was interested in. Like idea would be great to get like Lucas and people directly associated with it. But I kind of think they have a, I don't know, they kind of have a standing order that they're not supposed to talk about this at least yeah. formally which makes it all the more fun but like seth green kevin smith was super easy and i mean a lot of that's from connections with uh two of our producers kyle newman and adam f goldberg are like friends with these people and also like you know connected where it's like hey we i'd love to interview so and so and adam be like oh I, let me let me give him a call and see if i can get into him so like that that helped a ton nice um no that's funny uh so i was just at new york comic-con and i not figuratively, but like literally ran into Kevin Smith, uh, which is like nice. really funny. <laughs> he was on the the show floor, and uh, he was super nice. I mean, it was weird because I was like, I was like, oh man, that's a really good cosplay of Kevin Smith. And then someone asked him for a photo. He obliged. He was very nice. But then, like, I I just caught it out of my my corner of my eye. His name tag, he like discreetly turned over. <laughs> so yeah i was like i'm yeah, gonna leave him. huh no i'm saying like we sat down I, I had to do his interview over uh over the internet because I, I couldn't fly out to new jersey quick enough to do it sorry but you finished your story but it, oh no yeah. it was <laughs> just uh, thank you for calling it a story and not just yeah. a ramble that yeah. you know but <laughs> no it was uh no it was just interesting i i was like all right you know i'm not gonna bother this this guy like i love his stuff but you know he's just there to do his thing so yeah when we sat down to interview him we interviewed him over the internet though he uh was like thanks for doing this and the first thing he said is like man i would have been pissed had i not been in this movie like he hadn't asked me to be in this so that was like the first like it got the interview off on the right to put where it's like he wants to be doing stuff like this and it was great nice now i know you mentioned a little bit about lucas and that it's kind of common knowledge he doesn't like it you know the famous quote about he was he could you know destroy every copy uh did y'all even like did you um was it just kind of like all right we're not going to bother reaching out or like where was their attempt made or we made like a, an attempt but it kind of went nowhere yeah. but we also didn't push i mean it's kind of like the more like check the box but we didn't like pursue aggressively because I, I just don't see like we had talked to lucasfilm early on about the the, the process and kind of it's still kind of a tab at some point someone there considers it a taboo subject and their response was that it was too early to tell the story for them to be direct oh in. that's yeah <laughs> that's interesting um it's so and it's so funny because like yeah. like you you like you present it so well in the documentary too where it's like there were much worse things like yeah. coming out at that time <laughs> yeah we, i mean the, the film's just more of like yeah, we're not dumping on on the special. I mean, we like I, I still don't like I'm not going to pretend that it's great. I like I've had to watch yeah. it six, seven times all the way through, and every time's just <laughs> as painful as the previous one. But it's super interesting and it's fun to watch the context of what late seventies was because I wasn't familiar with that. But it's like this. I don't, it's just fun to go back to that time and kind of see what passed on network television. Like <laughs> yeah. it's insane. Um. Yeah. No. I was. Um. I was thinking about like when I was taking notes for this that 
you all do such an amazing job at just laying the framework though of like okay like you said what 70s television was like and you know to maybe younger eyes like this looks bizarro but I, again y'all lay it out where this was just this is something that you did <laughs> yeah like i always say like it would have been more weird for them not to do it based on the circumstances like the most successful movie of all time and they want to keep it you know people talking about it it's logical that you would this is what you would do if you were marketing a movie at that time like this it just happens to you know no one thought that they'd be talking about it 45 years later yeah and uh i thought it was like interesting like I mean, it's always really um, fascinating to see Harrison Ford kind of talk Star Wars at all because he seems so thoroughly over it. But yeah. um, managing to get a little bit of him talking about the holiday specials, like from various clips and stuff, was was pretty great. No, it's fun. I mean, they, they, they've all kind of spoke about it either in print interviews or like in the archive where we polled. So we kind of feel that like, and those feel actually more authentic to me than it would be if they sat down for like a formal interview. Like the Conan clip with Harrison Ford is is gold. Like that's all that stuff's <laughs> yeah. great, I think. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. I mean, I was going to say that perfectly sums it up right there. Um, but oh my gosh. And you got the fight the frizzies guy. <laughs> like, yeah. That's cool. No, I tracked him down. I mean, he was a good sport about it, but I mean, I think the interview is only like nine minutes, but uh, yeah, it's funny. Like he's a very established, renowned, like newsman that's had like a successful career, lots of awards. And you go to his Wikipedia page and like two of the three paragraphs are fighting the Frizzies <laughs> nice. and how it relates to the holiday special. So like he, he has a sense of humor about it, but I think he's also, you know, he wish people would know more of what he's accomplished than just that. <laughs> yeah, I know it, it, it was, uh, I definitely got that sense where he's like, yeah, I wish people just knew I did prestigious things. It's like you have these actors yeah. that are like, I've done King Lear, but you only know me from whatever. But I don't know. Yeah. I just, I guess I get that. But I'm also like, it's just nice to be known, period. But no, yeah. exactly. And that's Lenny Rips is one of the writers. And he's just like, yeah, I wrote the worst Star Wars thing. But at the end of the day, it's still Star Wars and people still want to know about it. Yeah. So even just being, yeah, very few things the last 45 years that people care about. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, it's kind of funny because, you know, I don't know if there's this interesting sort of parallel, you know, since Seth Green's in it. And I think like the detours thing is so fascinating because that's something that um, I don't know if it's technically lost media, but like, I don't think all of it has been released. And I think that's almost becoming its own sort of maybe not holiday special, but like being mythologized since it's not really readily yeah. available. I would love to have that be the next movie, but it's that, that's going to require Lucas, <laughs> that's going to require Lucasfilm's cooperation because they have something like forty or fifty episodes that have never seen the light of day. Wow. Just okay. Around. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like, yeah. I mean, they bought. I mean, Seth talked off camera a lot because I think somebody is like an NDA. I mean, it's it's a, that's another touchy subject, but the yeah, basically Lucas paid for all these episodes to get made. They made like forty or fifty of them. They're done, and then when Disney bought. Lucasfilm, they're like, oh, this cannot be the first. This irreverent comedy cannot be the first introduction to Star Wars for a generation. Yeah, and it just never. And and now it's been what fifteen years or something, or uh, ten years, whatever it's been. So it's. I, I think they should really like that's something I'm like very interested in that topic. Yeah, uh, and and like you like just you know to bring it back to to your film. I mean, it's like you. It's like uh, a couple of people say when you deny people access to it then you're it's like the streisand effect right it's like it's yeah. almost sort of building this up to this almost like mythic thing where i mean i mean i've seen clips of detour i think it's hit or miss but you know i i think that there's probably a lot more love and under and, and a lot more understanding of star wars from that like everybody obviously who made it was a big fan had a, had a lot of reverence yeah. um so yeah. yeah, I agree. I mean, I think they just throw stuff out at this point and kind of like it's fun to. I, I do understand the position where it's kind of like comedy doesn't age well and you have to frame it properly. So for detours to come out, I think it needs to be framed properly. And I think that's what, that's what we set out with this film was to frame the holiday special in a way that makes sense uh, and is more fun than actually watching it. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it It's funny because like 
uh, I guess I know several people were like, it's an endurance test. You know, it's like, okay, how long can you make it free tap out? Uh, like, I know it took me a couple of viewings, um, but yeah, it, it's, it really is just surreal. I mean, the VR porn in the, the living room is yeah. something. <laughs> At least that's interesting. The point where like, wait, what's this? How did this happen? But I mean, like all the Arcani Carney stuff, like I have a really hard time yeah. sitting through still. I mean, it's, I mean, the first time I watched it, I didn't have any context and I thought it was fake. I thought someone had like somehow taken <laughs> something else and put together with other elements to make it look like this mashup of a heart. Like, I was just like, there's no way this actually aired. Yeah. And I, I, I was wrong. <laughs> and it's so interesting that like, you know, as you presented in your documentary, like big, you know, hitters like J.J. Abrams and Dave Filoni, like they love the special. They embrace it. You know, they're trying to, as much as they can, maybe bring elements into canon. Um, I think I read uh, in preparation for this that, like, the director of Solo got a little ref... Uh, no, it was, yeah, it was it Solo. Uh, a it's little in the reference. script. It's really... I think it's it's uh, the reference Chewbacca's uh, Itchy, his father, yeah. I think. Yep. But it's just in the script. So, I mean, it's it's a reference. But, yeah, I, I think... Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah. Or is it, yeah. Um, but, again, he tried to get it in there, and they were like, no so it is funny because again it, it really isn't this like i mean it's bad but it's just like is it bad enough to just deny suppress and deny yeah i mean the thing i refer to this is like it's it's like going back and looking at star wars like junior high yearbook or like high school yearbook where it's kind of like no one's cool in high school for the most for like 40 years later everyone looks like a dork because times change and like no one was that cool and i kind of feel because you just don't know who you are yet and times change and i kind of feel like that's what's interesting about this is looking at star wars and its adolescence before it knew what it was and it seems a shame to just kind of discard that and not you know just pretend like it doesn't exist yeah and that's actually kind of the perfect way to distill that like i never really thought of it like that but yeah i mean you know as, as you all presented like star wars was going through some growing pains you know in between star wars and empire and um i i'm sorry i i, I can't recall the participant that was saying they were you know highly fascinated with that era because it's again you didn't have it all figured out and yeah. um you know so you were kind of seeing these growing pains no totally but like i said like the way it was i mean start other than Jaws, which wasn't as big as Star Wars, like there just wasn't a film like this. So like no one, I mean, for all people knew in, you know, the film would have gone away in Labor Day of 77 and, you know, just would have been a big film, but not like, you know, something where people like have you know, like loved it for generations, you know, for 45 years or like 46 at this point. But yeah, yeah it's just, it's times change. If you look at commercials, no, no commercials age well. <laughs> like, yeah. i mean i love looking at that's that's my favorite things about the specials actually the commercials and watching like the old gm or, or like yeah. just these really bad commercials because like i mean look at commercials from even five years ago they look dated yeah <laughs> i was gonna say there's some commercials from maybe not even that long ago that also have instantly aged not very well but yeah. um yeah and I, I what was so impressive was you know outside of like the amazing new interviews and archival stuff was um some of the um audio um were interviews um uh so was that hard to access or like how did you you all come about with um some of that material a lot of those uh a guy i talked to uh he had written a uh an article a 20th anniversary article for uh magazines i can't remember what magazine it was i think he wrote two of them but like he had recorded all those phone call conversations and you were just like, oh, can we? So we worked out a deal to get access to that, but it was probably like, I don't know, 30 hours of audio. So it's just going through it. But like a lot of these people have <laughs> passed away. Yeah. Yeah. Like he had, he had like, he had a nine minute interview with uh, Peter Mayhew, which I tried to use something from, but uh, it just wasn't that much. Like he was super nice, but the it was like eight minutes and the interview kind of got off to like a weird start. It has like a weird vibe to it. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, yeah. But no, that all I mean, all that stuff was just like that's as a documentary and all that stuff's like a dream. Yeah, that that's so cool. I I just thought like, oh my gosh, this is already like great documentary. But having that rare stuff, like for fans like myself, I'm like, oh, I love that. That's, yeah. that's the good stuff. Um, 
But um, and you brought up a really interesting point is, you know, part of your job is really sifting through, you know, like finding that gold. Is it do you feel like you you have to have that kind of in, like a like a filmmaker instinct of like what's, you know, what's usable, what's like what's not. It's more of a treasure hunt is the way I look at it. Mm. As an Indiana Jones reference, it's like being an archaeologist, but just going through and finding stuff. That you, I mean, when you're going through hours and hours of stuff, you're like, oh, this is interesting. And then it goes, so you might watch, you know, a hundred hours of archival stuff and pull out, you know, half an hour, an hour of like clips that are interesting. And you can take those and then figure out where they fit. So it's yeah. once it's basically just like boiling it down to something that's, you know, containable, but uh, yeah, I mean, going over, I mean, I, I mean, YouTube's amazing. There's so much stuff on YouTube that I, I mean, I spent so many hours just scanning stuff to see what oh, we wow. can find. <laughs> nice. Um. So uh, I want to wrap it up because uh, I don't want to hit that uh, 20 minute yeah. mark, but um, yeah. So this comes out on digital um, Friday, tomorrow, or today when you're seeing this uh, on, on YouTube. Yeah. Um, Tuesday, yeah. the the fifth is when it's out December 5th. Yep. Uh, yeah. December 5th. So yeah. it's going to be on, on VOD. Um, and I, I, it also has a limited theatrical run, correct? Yeah, we're wrapping it up now. We're actually going to be playing like 25 theaters in Canada, the 19th and 20th. But we did like a little little run in Australia, New Zealand. We played with Alamo Draft Houses, I think right. about 20 something of their locations. And they're, 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 they're like great friends and supportive and like a perfect match for like the kind of audience that, you know, we think enjoys this type of film. Nice. Um, I saw that it's either was or going to be at the Draft House in D.C., which is my, my nearest Draft House and my oh, second cool um okay, so yeah, it's playing uh i think this week it's like tuesday and wednesday and i think they just added like a 10 they just added a third show it's playing in there's ooh, three showings nice so yeah even though i've seen it i want to go out again and support it and you all should do that too again if you can't go out and see it like you can watch it at home you know fight those frizzies at home <laughs> watch this documentary it is so good gosh thank you so much uh for taking the time to talk to me about this uh, love the film again Raiders was such a, a an amazing film as well and um, maybe we'll see a detour thing someday <laughs> fingers crossed but yeah we need all this fan support we can get it but yeah thanks for supporting us we really appreciate it oh yeah absolutely and thank you so much and um, you know again I will link on the description of where you can find that and again the various platforms that it's streaming and again thanks so much all right thanks Yep.